if you knew you were enough? What would your life look like? What would love look like? This is the Enough Factor Broadcast, where we're redefining what makes you enough in life and in love. Now here's your host, Suzette Birna. Hello everybody, it's your life coach and relationship solutionist, Suzette Vernon, and welcome to my Enough Factor podcast. Yes, it's that time again. That time for me to amplify three critical factors of your enoughness. Your voice, your value, and your vision. When you are empowered in these three areas of your life, You tend to have a better, more fulfilling and satisfying experience of life and of love. So each week I bring you content that goes underneath the skin of your excuses and all the reasons you've given yourself to justify what you don't want. Let me ask you a question. Have you dated or known someone who has dated or they're married to a needy man? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about needy men and signs you should look for. Hopefully, before you get involved, (laughs) right? But even as you're getting to know somebody, These are things that you need to be aware of so that you don't end up in a situation that you feel like you cannot get yourself out of. Okay? My mom used to tell us, baby, you won't know a man until you marry him. Now, this was her response when. I was first proposed to by my first husband, who was also my second husband. That's a completely different episode. (laughs) And I got to tell y'all, that didn't work good for me. (laughs) It didn't work well for me. It truly didn't. There were some things that I needed to know that the people that I asked who were married did not tell me. Anybody know what I mean? Nobody gave me the kind of detailed information that I'm going to give you today. Okay? And I think, ladies, we have to evolve how we vet a man's potential to be in our lives. I think that we need to become more intentional in kind of vetting him before we get emotionally invested in him, especially the women that I'm, I'm talking to. Because the women who I talk to most are women who are mission-driven. They are the go-getters. They are the movers and the shakers. They are the women that most people rely on. They are the people that make it happen. And I just want to make sure that you don't end up drawing the short straw when it comes to your romantic relationships. It's better to know ahead of time than to be three, 10, 20 years into a marriage that you find out, oh, he only loved me. Or at least you feel like, let me change it. You feel like, oh, he only loved me because of what I could do for him. And then you start resenting it. So here are some signs. No particular order, but here's some signs that I've, I've identified. Already, 
He's saying, I'm so sorry, but this came up. Just give me a little more time. Yes, things do come up. Things come up in our lives that we do have to attend to. But early in a relationship, you want somebody who has time to invest in getting to know you. You want somebody to have time to spend time. And sadly, things can come up that hinder that person from being able to do that. Now, I'm not going to judge the rightness or the wrongness of it, but I will acknowledge that most of us as women don't like that. Can we agree that we don't like all these excuses and all these reasons why you can't show up? Right. So let's just say that. Not a judgment on him. It's just that's 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 the way we are. When we have met somebody that we feel like is a potential, we want him to have time to spend time. Right. So the balance of it is. OK. Maybe you all can set a date. Right. Because the thing you don't want is a person that makes excuses, but doesn't offer you a solution. And if he's making excuses, but not offering you a solution, only saying, be patient with me. I promise I'll make it up to you. But he's not telling you how he plans on making it up to you. It puts you in a situation where you're doing the heavy lifting of patience, of being patient. And he hasn't given you anything to alleviate the discomfort of feeling like you're being put on hold. And sadly, during the dating and vetting, we don't assert what we need from the person. Instead, we sit and try to justify why we should give him more time. And so what I'm suggesting to you is to assert, because if you know that about yourself, see, that's why it's so important for you to know you. If you know that the reason you own a dating site is because you want a date. And if this person wants to have a monopoly on your time, but won't give you what you got on the site for, then it's going to cause you some problems. You're not going to feel so good. So if you already know that, then your job is to come back with what is the truth. For example, I understand life comes up. But listen, the reason that we met on a dating site is because I wanted someone I could spend time with. And if things on your end are such that you can't do it, maybe we might need to part ways. Right? I guarantee you, if you do that, you will find out sooner rather than later what side of the fence this man is on. If he says, wait a minute, we just met and you already trying to. What do you mean? Then, you know, okay, he ain't going to be the right guy for you. He's already acting defensively. He's already making you the bad guy. For asking for what you want. And if he can't give it to you for you being willing to move on. So you already know sooner rather than later, before feelings are invested, you already know he doesn't have the kind of temperament and capacity that you need. Because a person who really does want to spend time with you, he'll give you something more definitive. He may say to you, okay, How about tomorrow night at the latest, the day after I have something more definitive to give you so that we can get together? See, when you assert yourself, it allows you to see if this person is willing to take a step toward you, a step toward resolution or whether he's just waiting for you to do all the heavy lifting emotionally while he goes off and whatever. So that's one. He rushes things. He's rushing for the two of you to date exclusively. 
You just met this cat and he already ready to give you the label of girlfriend. He's rushing you to meet his kids. He's rushing you down the aisle to get married. He's told all his friends, his family, his church family. He's told everybody about you and they can't wait to meet you. Now, I used to think, oh man, that means he's really, really into me. <gasps> but a couple of trips around the block, I started learning that's not necessarily true. And I started taking a step back and saying, why is he in such a hurry? Why is he in such a hurry to expose me to everybody else? We don't even know each other yet. We haven't even, we, we're dating each other. He's already rushing me into these interactions with other people. But wait, I don't even know him yet. He talking good, but is he good? He's quick to propose. He's quick to say he loves you. Those are signs. So I learned that. That husband that I told you about that I married twice, he rushed me both times down the aisle. And because I had, didn't have this information that I'm sharing with you all, I was flattered. I thought it was a sign of how ready he was to commit. I didn't realize he was rushing me because he wanted me to help his dream. See, he did have a plan for me. I just wasn't aware that it was the reason why he wanted to marry me. He thought I'd be a great person to help him birth his dream. And I was. But I suffered greatly severe emotional neglect. When a person wants to rush you, pump the brakes, slow it down. Now, I have to admit something to y'all. When I met my, my now husband, I was the one in the hurry. Not to get married, but because I was in a marriage where I was severely sexually neglected, I got nervous that he wanted to wait before having sex. It tugged at a wound, an emotional wound that I still carried. But the beautiful thing that helped me is he stayed engaged with me. He remained attentive. He remained invested. And as we continued to get to know each other, it resolved my fears. As a matter of fact, it was so funny. I told one of my girlfriends, I said, mm, I'm scared I'm about to put him in the friend zone. I had never dated someone like him before. So I didn't understand how healthy relating worked. And so I was like, mm, so if he don't kiss me soon or he don't do some certain, certain things soon, he may end up in the friend zone. And it was almost as if the universe heard it because after we went out, he walked me to my car and he was walking away. Then he stopped turned around, came back to me, and planted one really, really good kiss on me. Needless to say, when I came back and talked to my girlfriend, I said, oh, well, we don't have to worry no more. We good. <laughs> and so some things you're going to come up against that are going to feel unfamiliar. They're going to feel weird. That's why I'm giving you enough information so that you will know how to handle it. And you'll say, oh, wait, him rushing me. Oh, no, I shouldn't look at it this way. Let me slow things down because you know what you want. You don't just want to be rushed. You want true partnership. That takes time. That's a garden you both are cultivating together. And how many of you know when you plant a seed, it's not fully grown by the next day. You have to nurture it together. And then as it starts growing, then you can start having other expectations. But to rush, it's like, wait, we, we, we just had our first conversation. Sure, we got along well, but you already ready to make me your girlfriend. You already ready to take take your profile down and you want me to take mine down too? Wait, he, you, I don't even know if I like you yet. I like the idea of you, but I don't know you yet. 
So no, I am not going to do anything until I know you. Right? And this is what I'm saying to you. Now, of course, I don't recommend that you say it like that to him because they'll feel like you're shaming him. But there are other ways. And in my Do You Speak Male program, I go into the other ways where you can say something to a man without him getting defensive and yet without you erasing yourself as well. As a matter of fact, I have a white paper on that very subject that I can give you for free. But for those of you that need a little bit more work in understanding men so that you don't have expectations of him and of yourself that are detrimental. If you need something a little bit deeper and hands on, then I have the program. But if you think you would benefit in the meantime by the white paper, then send me an email or go into my website to the contact us tab. I'll send you that information. Okay. Okay. Another sign that he's needy He puts himself in the role of receiver and puts you in the role of giver. And I'm telling you, ladies, this is a trap, especially for ladies like us. We like being courted. We want him to put the time in. We like that, right? But many, many times we get seduced into the roles being reversed where he's the one that needs and you're the one that's giving it to him. And so if you don't want to end up in that space, don't say yes when you're invited. And these are subtle ways that you get invited into him being needy and you being his supplier. And sometimes it gets kind of hard because a lot of times people who are needy are very personable. They're very charming and humorous and engaging. And he might shower you with compliments or shower you with praise. And he might even shower you with gifts. He might even shower you with good lovemaking. It throws you off balance. He wants to keep you in a place where you will continue to meet his need. But don't fall for the okie doke, ladies. Don't fall for the okie doke. Uh, Here is one, especially for those of you that have dreams and and you, you have things that you're passionate about. Another sign of neediness is instead of trying to involve himself or meet you where you are, he'd rather wait for you to meet him on his terms or on his turf. In fact, he's only interested in having you on his terms. Again, one-sidedness. And this is where you have to kind of maintain some balance here. Even when you're first dating, don't stop your life. Continue with your involvements. Continue with the things that you do. And see how willing he is to come where you are. Or if he's always, well, okay, well, when you get finished with that, give me a call. Well, when you get through with that, maybe you can come over. Or when this right here is over, maybe I can come over. See how enthusiastic he is about your wins, what you're passionate about, what you're doing. See if he wants to find a way to help. One of the things I loved about my husband when I first moved into my home, he measured my windows and everything. And he went with me to Lowe's and helped me pick out blinds and hung them. Because it was a new structure, so I needed blinds on all the windows and he did it and I cooked dinner for us and everything and gave him lemonade and we had music playing but it was so nice watching him do that for me another way that you know he's needy is you find yourself constantly explaining and reassuring him you're constantly saying oh no 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 we all right Oh, no, 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 no. The reason I didn't answer the phone, I was in a meeting. No, we're good. You're constantly having to explain your actions and reassure him. He gets fearful 
when other things take your attention. You were with a girlfriend and you didn't pick up. I know people who've complained that their significant other sees them wanting me time as a threat. And if you know you value certain things that you like to do alone by yourself, then you need to, like my mama said, start out the way you plan on holding out. Because sure, in the beginning of a relationship, you love the attention you're getting. I get it. You love it. You're caught up in the rapture. I get it. But you have to ask yourself, do I in my regular life, would I want this man up under me all the time? Yeah, it's nice now, him calling me throughout the day. But with the kind of job I have, the kind of things that I'm doing, the kind of interest, would that be welcomed over time or would it become annoying? If your answer is the latter, then you're going to have to find a more balanced way for you to enjoy the euphoria, but also understand. So I don't need to give him a false representation of who I am. Right. Another sign that the man is needy and it's more subtle. Him needing you to accept him doing as little as possible, yet continuing to be someone he can count on. He wants you for the bargain basement price of as little as possible. And he may constantly call. He may constantly text. How are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, babe. He needs you to accept his non-involvement. He needs you to do it. And it's subtle. It's, it's almost like the example of you, you let him drive your car. But when you get ready to get in the car, he's run all the gas out of your car and apologizes and says, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I was going to do that before you got home. And then you say, that, that, that's all right. That's all right. I'll go do it. But that's the neediness. He needs you to accept his non-action. He, he doesn't want to lose you. Oh, he'll tell you all day he doesn't want to lose you. He might beg, please, baby, please. He might even start crying. He might start singing, baby, tell me how am I supposed to live without you? He may stand outside your door in the rain. And the thing that usually messes us up is we look at that as, oh, he must really, really care. I mean, oh, my God, he's standing out there in the rain. But he still has not done anything. He still wants you to accept his non-involvement. He still wants you to accept him doing as little as possible. He might be standing in the rain, but he never put the gas in your car. It's like you, you don't have to stand in the rain. Just put gas in the car. <laughs> but rather than put gas in the car. He'll do all these other acts that seem like he really, really wants the relationship, but he's still doing it for as little effort as he can. But it happens to us mission driven servant heart women all the time. We fall for the fixer upper. We fall for the poor victim, the poor person because they need us. But I'm going to tell you, that gets old quick. Your need to be needed gets old quick. It's like having a car that constantly quits on you. You get tired. You get tired of the hoopty always breaking down. And some of you are falling for hoopty men. He takes from you emotionally, spiritually, socially, financially, mentally. And you end up staying too long because you feel like he needs you. I can't kick a man when he's down. How is taking care of your own needs kicking him? See, we have to change our definitions because our definitions are what keep us stuck in cycles of self-betrayal. It's these definitions that we've adopted that are destroying our peace and keeping us from having the kind of relationships that we deserve. And this is the last one. He's quick to compliment you, 
on what he likes. And notice everything is beneficial to him. Right. So take a pause. And think about what he compliments you on. Does he compliment you on things that you respect about you? Things you like about you? Or is he complimenting you on the things he likes or things that are beneficial to him? Right? To sum it up, needy is anything that takes more than it gives. A truly self-assured man wants to know what brings you joy and involves himself in doing it. And until next time, I want you to know that you are worthy. You are worth it. You are more than enough. Bye now. You have just listened to the Enough Factor Podcast with your host, Suzette Fearnard. To get notified of new episodes or to dig deeper into today's topic, become a subscriber. And while you're at it, tell us how we're doing and what topics you're interested in. We appreciate your feedback and your reviews. Until next time, remember, you are worthy, you are worth it, you are enough.